SpongeBob SquarePants Rock Bottom Plunge was actually a huge bucket list attraction for me. It was one of the last Gerslauer Eurofighters I needed in America, and with it being located in the Mall of America in Minnesota, it really is an icon. It's the standout attraction in this park. It's got those awesome colors. It's themed to one of my favorite characters in TV shows of all time. So I was super stoked to get on it, but I'm not gonna lie, I was a little disappointed. I think this is actually one of the weaker Eurofighters that Gerslauer has built. But I'm going to talk all about that in this review. Let's first go over some of these stats because SpongeBob is a fun attraction. Don't get me wrong. We have a height of almost 75 feet, an angle of descent of 97 degrees. That's a signature move for these Eurofighters. You have that vertical lift hill and then a beyond vertical drop. Our top speed is 44 miles per hour. Not too fast. There are only two inversions on this ride. I think it's typical for most Eurofighters at this point to have a little more than that. And it's got a track length of just over 1,300 feet. So let's kind of break this ride down a little bit. What works and what doesn't? First of all, and I know this is kind of obvious, but the ride looks fantastic. When you walk up to this thing, presentation is a 10 out of 10. They've even gone as far as putting up some theming on the back wall of this thing to act as a backdrop to make you feel like you're under the sea. You're in Bikini Bottom. And SpongeBob SquarePants Rockbound Plunge also has one of the best entrance signs ever. Look at this thing. It's so awesome. SpongeBob and Patrick, as they're on the bus going to Rock Bottom, they're leaving Bikini Bottom. There's even the sign for the bus stop and that's where you board. And they've even designed the cars to kind of simulate what those Bikini Bottom buses look like. So I really love what Nickelodeon Universe did here. What else works here? That vertical lift hill to start off the ride is awesome. I know I've talked about these before, but seriously, this is a perfect example of how something as boring as a lift hill can be turned into really an element on the ride. It makes it exciting. While normally you're taking this slow climb up to the top, you know, maybe your anticipation is rising depending on the type of ride you're on. Here it forces you to get excited or maybe nervous. You're pointed straight up at the ceiling. It feels unnatural and it's really cool. It's seriously like one of the best ways you can start off a ride. So then you have this slow crest over the top and really I gotta emphasize the slow part here. It takes its time going over. And that's when you're facing straight down at the drop. And these things are always great. You absolutely can't go wrong with a drop like that and a classic first maneuver there with the vertical loop. Following that, there's an overbank turn, your second inversion, which is a heartline roll. You enter the mid-course break run, drop into an overbank. That's where you have your helix and then into the break run. So like I mentioned, it's a short ride and I think that is a downer. However, I'm not gonna really dock the park on this because they had a very limited amount of space to work with. So they fit in just about as much as they could here. That being said, I do not think that some of these transitions were that well done. Some of them are very jarring and with those over the shoulder restraints, it can knock your head around a little bit. Now I know that the newer Gerslauers have kind of opted for these ride vehicles where actually it moves it to a lap bar instead of an over the shoulder restraint and it makes the ride experience way more comfortable. Look at something like Hydrus at Casino Pier or Adrenaline Peak at Oaks Amusement Park. Not only is it more comfortable, but it's also smoother. Rock Bottom Plunge is a ride that has not aged that well. It opened in 2008, so as of when this review is being made, it's less than 15 years old, but it is not the smoothest ride out there. Which is interesting, because when you ride some Gerslauers, they're as smooth as can be. And then you ride others that, uh, well, they're a little on the rougher side. Unfortunately, this is one of those attractions. What that does is it makes it not as re-rideable. You almost kind of have to sacrifice it. You're like, okay, these elements are fun and cool, but how much can I take the jackhammering or the slamming of my side into the restraint? And some people will be able to handle it better than others. I mean, if you've ridden this a bunch of times, then you probably know where to brace. If you're keeping your head forward, then yeah, maybe it's not gonna be as bad. But who I really feel for is those people that are riding it for the first time. They don't know what to expect. It might not be the most pleasant experience for them. So I think what this ride is a good example of is how a company has improved over time. We've seen Gersauer really step up their game since 2008, and that's very apparent with their new Eurofighters. I would say if there was a way that they could even install those lap bar only restraints onto this ride, just kind of change out the whole ride vehicles, then I think that would absolutely be a big step up for this attraction. I don't know if that is possible, but I think those trains are definitely gonna be one of the reasons why this ride suffers. So for that reason, I can't really give this ride a glowing review. When I think about all of the Eurofighters I've ridden, this is definitely towards the bottom. So for its final score, I'm gonna give it a six out of 10. Layout wise, it's fine. Probably not anything crazy to shout at. Again, it's a little on the shorter side. Left a little bit to be desired, which is a shame. But on the plus side, 
the ride really does look fantastic. I think this ride is a good example of how you can get some things right, other things not quite, but with a couple small changes, you could have a great attraction. So I'd love to hear from you guys down in the comments below. What do you think of SpongeBob SquarePants Rock Bottom Plunge at the Mall of America, specifically Nickelodeon Universe? Post all those thoughts down in the comments below and stay tuned for more reviews here at Coaster Studios, and I'll see you next time.